Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really cool equation with complex numbers. Why do I call this equation really cool? Because we have an infinite sum on the left hand side and we have a finite value on the right hand side. Is it really finite? L and I? We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the logarithm of a complex number or the complex logarithm because it's multi-valued. We're also going to be talking about the series on the left-hand side, which is an infinite series, which is super duper special, by the way. All right. So we're going to talk about some interesting stuff. Get ready and let's get started. I'm going to be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to consider the following. Start with 1 over 1 minus d squared. You might be asking, like questioning, like, why on earth you start with something like that? And my answer would be, you'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and write this using the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series. Of course, d squared have to cert satisfy certain criteria. The absolute value needs to be less than or equal to 1, so on and so forth. I think it's only 1, right? Less than 1, maybe? Okay, you get the idea. So if you expand it, we're going to get something like this, right? Even powers, because it's kind of like 1 over 1 minus r, but r is replaced with z squared. Get the idea? Now we're going to go ahead and integrate both sides. Why? Because it's fun. But not only that, when we do, we're going to get something interesting. You'll see in a little bit. But since these two things are equivalent, at least for some values of z, then we can go ahead and integrate both sides. Great. Now, the left-hand side is pretty easy to integrate because it's just about um, power rule, right? Uh, if you integrate 1, you get z, and then you add 1, divide by that, you add 1 to the exponent, divide by that, so on and so forth, right? I can, I guess, stop at this point. Equals. Now, the right-hand side is kind of like an interesting integral, don't you think? We can do a couple different things. For example, I can use partial fractions. I can write this as... 1 over 1 plus z times 1 minus z from difference of two squares. I've got to memorize that. And then kind of split it up like this into two fractions whose denominators give us the denominator when multiplied. In other words, the common denominator. And then we can try to find the values of a and b by making a common denominator and setting those two things equal to each other polynomially and so on and so forth. Hopefully you know how... Um, Partial fractions work, we use this with limits, integrals, derivatives, whatever, so on and so forth. But that's one way to do it, and I'm going to show you another way to do it, because I think this is really cool. And that method is using complex numbers, because this channel is all about complex numbers. Isn't that cool? And I have another channel called CyberMath, which is focusing on algebra number theory and, what's the third one? Trigonometry problems, a little bit of geometry here and there. A pinch of geometry. Uh, great. So that's why it's important to understand the complex approach, right? My other channel that focuses on complex numbers is called A plus BI. By the way, go ahead and check it out and let me know. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out the lecture videos first. And always, always ask questions. Okay? Now, in this problem, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace Z with IW. Because when I do that and I square z, I get i squared w squared. And of course, i squared is negative 1, so z squared becomes negative w squared. And negative z squared becomes w squared. And 1 minus z squared becomes 1 plus w squared. Isn't that cool? And of course, dz from here just becomes i times dw because i is a constant. You just differentiate w, which is our variable. So... Let's go ahead and plug these into our integral and see how simple things can get, right? So we're going to replace negative z, 1 minus z squared with 1 plus w squared and dz with I w, I dw, but I'm going to pull the i out, okay? So it's a constant, so we can pull it out, just like the summation symbol, right? And this is a super-duper easy integral. It is just arc tangent. You see how cool that is? Now, that integral will appear on the right-hand side, so we're going to add the constant. So let's go ahead and take this. I could probably just, you know, do this. I'll bring that result over here, i times arctangent w plus c. I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I'm lazy, and I want to go ahead and use this space, oops, to complete my work. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and finish our work here. Uh, just keep going back to the ink. So let's go ahead and erase this completely without lifting our pencil. Here we go, yay. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and back substitute. What is W? W, oops, I erased it, but do you remember what it was? Z is IW. So W is Z divided by I, but multiply by negative I, you get, because negative I squared is one, you get negative IZ. So W is negative IZ. So this becomes I times arctangent of negative IZ plus C, right? Now here's the thing. If you replace Z with zero on both sides, you're gonna get zero equals C, which means C equals zero, which means I can totally get rid of the C. I don't need C, okay, too bad. Now here's what I have so far. This is my infinite series and the sum is equal to this. Isn't that cool? I times arctangent negative i. Some of you will probably recognize what it is and don't say it because we're gonna talk about it in a little bit, okay? So here's what I have so far. I know that my, my infinite tank was equal to one half of ln i. So now this is what this is equal to. In other words, i times arctangent negative i z equals one half ln i. Now is a good time to talk about complex logarithm. ln of a complex number is ln of the absolute value of the complex number plus i times the argument of that complex number. Now i is right here in the complex plane. It's distance from zero is one. Therefore, it makes an angle of pi over two between the real and the imaginary axes, okay? So now, ln of i is gonna be ln of absolute value of i, which is one, ln of one is zero, so this will be zero. I'm gonna end up with i times argument of c, but argument of c is pi over two. But you're allowed to add multiples of two pi to it to represent all possible angles because it's multi-valued. That's the cool part about this. ln i is not a single value, it is multi-valued. It's whatever you want it to be, depending on the n value you pick, of course. You don't have total freedom, you have partial freedom, okay? So that's ln i, let's plug it in and see what happens. Here's where the math of magic happens. So now we get one half of ln i, which is i times pi over two plus two pi n. And if we do the hocus pocus or math of magics, I cancels out, and then we end up with something like this. Let's go ahead and distribute that. Arctangent negative iz equals pi over four plus pi n, and that's just perfect. And let's go ahead and tan both sides, and I'm probably gonna move this guy over here a little bit to leave room for tan. If you tan both sides like tangent, you're gonna get tan and r tan are gonna cancel out. Negative iz equals tangent of pi over four, which is one, and then pi n, since pi is the period, it doesn't matter, it's always gonna be one, multiply both sides by i, you're gonna get z equals i. Wow, that's cool, right? Z equals i seems to be the only solution. Well, wait a minute, how do you know that it's the only solution? Well, that looks like it, and I'm gonna check my results with, well, from alpha anyways, but before that, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So by the way, z, plus z cubed over three, plus z to the fifth over five, plus dot, 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 is equivalent to arctangent hyperbolic z. Okay, inverse tangent, however you wanna use, but however you wanna read it, but that's what it is. Okay, this is how you write it. And that's equal to one half ln one plus z divided by one minus c. So now our series is equivalent to that, and we are given that this is equal to one half ln i. So these two things are equal, one half cancels, ln cancels, this needs to be i. To keep a long story short, this needs to be i. So one plus z equals i minus iz, bring the iz and z together, z plus iz equals i minus one, z times one plus i equals i minus one, and then z equals i minus one divided by one plus i, multiply by one minus i, one minus i, and you get two i divided by two, which is i, so z equals i, case closed. But before that, 
Let's look at Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem? Ta da da da, if you prompt it correctly, maybe. Yes, complex solution is z equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.